you've made a decision up front that you and cars that you want to have shared cars and that what you're exploring with the car club. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that Lyon could done? Because it seemed like they had quite significantly more parking than you were thinking about with your initial draws when you were at the site. They've got, has got 10 parking spaces. Yeah. Two separate loads of five each, and we are thinking of doing much more than that, if at all. Right. And they've also got, I think they've got, they've got electrical hookup as well for electric cars. Wow. Um, but they do carpooling, so they've just got members' cars, um, which they then share between them, and they've just got a system yeah. locked out where, they, where they're able to, to do that. So, I mean, that reduces costs because you're only paying for uh, insurance for 10 cars, it kind of discourages people from leaking on this insurance and stuff like that as well. So. I said, the, the, the only reason I ask, I suppose, is because I think that's brilliant and most people don't need to do that, that's because it depends on your life situation. Well, if you, you want to be, for work every day. If you want to park your most voice, yeah. you just need to <laughs> Obviously it's a big issue with like, non-driving life. It's disgusting. <laughs> but I mean, that's the whole idea is to try and, I guess, yeah, discourage car use for the mm -hmm. shed so people can store their bicycles safely. Um, I mean, the site is really close to the canal which gives you road free access straight into the centre of the town. It's good bus service. It's good bus service. We've got our own train station, there's an Asda right there, you know, there's only the, the site already has like got lots of stuff lined up to make it like to reduce dependency on cars, I think. So it's got a lot going for it in that regard. I mean again that's all for discussion. Oh, okay. I just ask because people not working um Sanders hours quite a lot of the time and obviously they do have yeah. yeah. that's right. I mean people will just have lifestyles and they yeah. need cars and We'll have to accommodate that. We're not going to go and say they will go find ours car use three times a week. But it's also, I mean, this particular site is very, very good for public transport. Yes, yeah, um, Because it's literally next to the railway station. You just walk off the train out of the house. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you've got that every 30 minutes uh, into the city now, 11 minutes it takes you to get there and back. Um, and it's also, I mean, there's three different bus routes pass by. Um, and, the, and the 60 ones are every 10 minutes during the day, the 7's every 10 minutes um, and you've got the 8 um, which is less, it's going to be half an hour or something so I mean, it's, it's particularly well placed that site um, if, you, if you're using public transport I personally feel you know, that this is going to make a lot of demands for me because uh, when I, I started on this road and I was thinking about all these shared things and how I will really get upset if folk do keep the bin area tidy or you know the, 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 the place where the washing is, is you know, somebody's left their washing in there for five days and they're not so there's lots that's going to, that's, uh, there's a lot of things about being part of a co housing community that's going to be demanding. But I feel that there's a lot that I'm going to learn. Do you know this, I'm I'm sixty two and I've got an opportunity to be part of something that's exciting and is new. Um, and my lockdown needs have been so generous with their learning and their time. Um, and I think if we can do this, we're going to be part of the way to a lot of people in Scotland. Um, because it's not that we have a choice about whether we start to, to, to live in an environmentally friendly way and try and reduce the damage that we're doing to the, 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 the earth. We've not a choice now, we need to do it. We need to do it. And I'm hoping that we will, I'm confident we're going to get this up and moving. Um, and when we do, you know, I'm looking to us to, to, to be a bit of a beacon um, to other folk in Scotland. Yeah, there's some kind of reality about the transition from going from individual dwelling lifestyles into this, which maybe needs yeah. some kind of and it's um, not, it's not middle ground in the priorities. Uh, just in practicalities, do you envisage the need to have 22 people all set on the day that you have taken uh, uh, possession of this piece of land and uh, uh, ready to sign up a builder to, to build things? Do you need 22 people or families uh, ready to, uh, to, to start this process? Or can you do it piecemeal? What's the practicality of, of, of the... Yeah, we've got to find your treasure. Yes, I'm a treasure for my sins. I can maybe have a go at that one. Um, the answer is it is in part dependent entirely on money. Um, I mean, we, we know how to finance this. I mean, the finance will be 7% through a mortgage taken by the cooperative, not by the individual. 
Um, the cooperative has a mortgage, 70% of it will come through that, through the either Geodus Bank or the Eco Ecological Building Society, or probably a couple of more sources. 10% will come from anybody signing up because it's a 10% deposit. Right, so that's a hurdle, there's no negotiation in that one. Um, 10% of the cost of the house you, you're taking on. Plus the column. Right. So, so, each house, the so each house has got a number of shares allocated to it. Um, so you're not, a, you're not a, a tenant, you're not an owner. What we are, uh, what we have is a right of occupancy. And we own our shares, and the shares are what we get back when we leave. So the number of, according to the cost, the individual cost of the house, means the share allocation. And therefore, what, your in, what, what the income is of each individual person will determine how much shares they buy. So if your income's higher, you're going to buy the shares quicker. If your income's lower, then you're going to take longer to buy, buy the shares. But you're still the same boat, but it's a co-op. So the reason I'm saying that is that has an influence on how many people we need when, this, when the show begins. Um, so if there's people coming in who have got if you like, a lot of equity, and they're putting a lot more shares on the table to start with, and it, and it will be necessary, I'm quite clear on that for the financials to stack up. Um, then we're, that will then determine where every house is allocated when they're built or where we've got a wee bit slack. So, I mean, if, if the equity isn't, if that 20% I'm talking about, and plus a good part of 10%, if that isn't the one into place, um, then it means we need to get more people there ready to move when the houses are built. If, we, if we're exceeding what we're looking for in terms of equity, um, then it gives us a little bit of slack. What Lilacs experienced was that they had a good solid core of people ready to move in anyway, right? But what in fact happened was there was, was there too many people wanting to move in. They didn't have any problem getting the houses filled, none. Um, and in fact what happened was they, 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 they got a way of including people within Lilacs. You know, you can't just walk into a co-op, you can't just walk into Clark and it ain't going to happen. Um, I mean, uh, so there needs to be a way of including people in a process of membership. And what that happened was, in fact, because they were so under pressure to get the houses allocated, the 20 houses, they had to cut that right back. So they, were, they, they had no problem filling the houses, none. They had a waiting list. Um, so what they had to do is go through the waiting list very quickly. <laughs> and get the houses allocated because um, they were under a bit of financial pressure. So the, the, the answer is there's no black and white answer to your, to your question, Tom. It just depends on the mixture of people who are involved in it and what they're bringing with them um, in terms of finance. Quite crudely, money, dosh. Um, and that's what's going to determine where there's going to be a group. But I have to say none of us from our own reading and for own conversation with people involved in this in other parts of the country, including Europe. Um, none of us thinks there's going to be any problem getting these houses uh, shifted. Um, really, no. Can I ask another question? Is strawberry housing, uh, have you been in talks with any builders who are familiar with that system? Because it's not usual. You know, for there is a network of uh, Builders and architects across the UK who specialise in cage property. There was a presentation I went to at the Lighthouse about 18 months ago, um, which featured a company from Newcastle who specialise in it. So, um, if you'd say Bill Strawberry, there are a, a network of people who will come and um, volunteer to help you to build a strawberry to show that you gain more experience of it. And since Lyle used Strawbill, the technology has moved on. So, their houses, their walls are like that thick, yeah. I think, for Strawbill. They've since moved on, and it's now looking at it's compacted, so it's like become much more dense and so on. Um, it was something we were working, looking at very strongly um, at the start of this when Clacken came together. Um, we've since kind of been looking at loads of different kind of stuff, so we've slightly, um, I've slightly taken my foot off the accelerator in terms of looking at Sterobial, but it's still something we're very interested in. Uh, the question is whether or not it's going to work for the Scottish climate. For houses, because um, the rainfall and leaks is about half the level it is up here. So, we just need to, if we were going to deploy that as a building technique, and I still think it's something we will be looking at very carefully, we need to make sure it's going to stand up to the, to the Scottish weather, basically. Um, but I mean, it makes a lot. Strawberry is an incredible material to use. It's very healthy, it's very quiet in the houses, it's super insulated, it's 
replaceable, it's sustainable. Um, if you are one of the things I learned at this um, at this uh, um, seminar thing was that if you want to build strawberry, you need to uh, maybe book in time for the harvest for the, the harvest of the straw. <laughs> so you, if you want to if you want to build the following summer, you need to buy your straw in autumn when it's getting harvested. Mm -hmm. so, so it's just good to know about that kind of. Um, the rhythms of these things and how these all kind of details are that. And that's actually there's something quite nice and reasonable. Well, I like that actually also, yeah, use that natural product and it is going to be friendly to the environment and it's going to be sustainable. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I'd like to add to that, just to say, I mean, we are going to have a session within the cooperative in the coming ones, purely on materials. Um, because, I mean, five years ago, Sobia was it, but nowadays there's lots more choice. So you things like hemp blocks now, we actually are getting manufactured in Scotland now. Um, so there are other options which provide the same in high insulation as straw build does. So we'll make a decision as a co-op in the coming months. Well, I'm hoping that the growth of the cannabis industry we can get free hemp. <laughs> 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 Sorry. So it's just a lack design of the home. So have you made a decision as well with the co-op to the, the largest home that you're going to build a three bedroom property. Um, the yeah the, the kind of our um, discussions that we've had so far the biggest problem we've looking at is a three bed house room but that's you know all subject to kind of change and discussion and stuff like that. Oh, and okay, so decided. I mean why it's got one four bed house I think mm -hmm. two four bed yes. houses. The problems shut them. Yeah yeah so I think I've been Glasgow is mostly two and three bed flats. One, two, three bed flats that you get in Glasgow, so I can think of where that's the, what most people kind of live in. So. And on, on that, I suppose, is there any just discussion of having workspaces? So, like, personally, I'm kind of, if in the future, if I, if I sell my place and move to something else, I need an office mm -hmm. space. I need a, you know, my partner and I both do freelance work at home. And so, I imagine there'll be other people in a similar situation. If you've got a family with two kids and they need workspace, then they're going to be looking at that bigger. But that doesn't necessarily need to be within a full bedroom dwelling. That could be shared workspaces. Uh -huh. You might have freelance people interested in working. In We've well, spoken about that in, in, in the context of the shared, the shared house, um, where we would have um, space to eat together a couple of yeah. times a week and do other activities, but we're also looking to have space that could be used for workspace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And ideally both workspace, office space, and also workspace, so more, more physical sort of work. Yeah, for workshops. Yes. Yeah. This um, all sounds great, but it does present um, planning challenges because if you've got space which is for working only, mm -hmm. then uh, the planning consent is different when you're talking about this It depends on if you're just working yourself in, a, in an office space, it's probably okay if you have public access. Mm -hmm. So if you have customers coming to, to visit you, mm -hmm. then that would be a planning issue because you've created some commercial space within a domestic space. So it depends on, it kind of depends on who's there and what you want to do. Um, if, if we were there and someone wanted to have a, a fitness class or something where people were coming to the site, we could just do a small planning application to get that granted. But, uh, so they don't allow it to have workshops in the project, where they have they do occasional have workshops, which would mean people from the public coming in. You can still, it's, it's okay to have an occasional event, like if you're a church, you can have a coffee <coughs> bar, you don't need consent for that. But if you opened a cafe, and there's also issues which we need to be resolved in terms of like, well, if there's one person having their own workspace within the shared house, then that's for, if that's for their exclusive use, then that has to be negotiated and worked out within the terms of what we're planning. So uh, I would like to say anything's possible, but uh, it's possible subject to sociocratic discussion. Of course. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's lots of potential for, for all this kind of stuff. And it was uh, something that was, I think this came up most and most of times since the project has got going is um, can we include workspace and so on and how we can be accommodate that if we want to do that. So yeah, it's very much a possibility. And it would be also be um, kind of mixed use of the site and would be um, a way of embedding sustainability into the site. So I mean, there's various proposals from different groups to have like 
people living and working in the same place, you know. So, so yeah, there's lots of potential. Absolutely. Lovely. Yeah. So I just want to say, Hart, you know, that we are not going to set up a gated community for a sale, um, that we will re envisage ourselves being very active um, in the, the general uh, neighbourhood, and hopefully that we will bring stuff to, to this area um, that would be beneficial to the folk of here. No port cuts, no, no port cuts, <laughs> no drawbridge. No. Um, any more questions? Any thoughts? Sorry, two questions. Sorry. One was just back to finance, was about whether you envisage or whether you've done within the cost of a kind of minimum income that someone needs to have to sustain their tenure within the property. Well, within the, I can only speak from Lilac. Um, Lilac has got, in fact, a kind of grid they use mm -hmm. um, for the size of house versus um, income. So, like, the minimum in Lilac is approximately 12,000 quid per annum gets you a one bedroom. Mm -hmm. So that's how they work it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the whole details of finance, this, to be honest with you, are still to be worked out. Yeah. It's um, just like I said, it's also because I'm a single payment, so my income needs to cover two rooms, <laughs> which means that I need to have yeah. more than yeah. that to have a two bedroom place. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's that. Uh, at this stage, it wants to be sorted out. The other question was just about this piece of land which is not green <laughs> on the site plan. So I was just curious because when we visited the site previously we looked at it, the whole thing, but within this mm -hmm. drawing there's obviously an, an area left to the left there. Oh, that, that's a forest, a small... No, the, sorry, the, area, yeah, the, the, other, the other side, like, between the flats and the site. You mean that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so that's, that's just like the flat land. Yeah, yeah, so that's so that that there is the exit from the train station, that's mm -hmm. the pathway there. Okay. So we're kind of roughly thinking of of that being the boundary for the housing element and then we are uh, in negotiations with having that as a lot of community garden space. I just wonder what the restrictions or or potential problems that might arise with that half of a site. You know, the developer came along and wanted to build high density housing right there or, you know, I don't this know what the restrictions This is a very conversation that we had with the guy from the, the council. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if basically there's, there's planning restrictions, so if there was to be, if we want to build houses here, then that basically means that there has to be an exclusion zone here of so many feet or metres or something like that. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if houses get built here first, then we need to have an exclusion zone back to about there, possibly. Okay. So it's all part of the negotiations. Um, I'm going to send you in because he made them cut to you. Okay, So yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's all up in here. The these these are the plans that we put together. This is our um, wish list for for this site. This would be our ideal. As I said, we are subject to the council's um, many heads and tentacles. So any one thing that any part of the council comes up with could um, either have an impact on our site, they could say to us, no, we want to put 50 houses on there or something like that and just mm -hmm. tell us to F off. But again, all we can do is proceed with good faith. And, yeah. um, I mean, the, the, you're right about, you know, that's, this, this is, a, this is a, a potential plan for that a piece of ground is, is in Scotland. Yeah. But that's not written in, in Talbot's story. So, yeah. If they said we are going to build X amount of houses there, we might need to look at that and say we, are, we need to walk away from this. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what's there is what our plan is for our co-housing community, yeah. and, but we're, we're unsure where that's going to be just now. And um, That's the site that, was, that we're looking at as a possibility. Um, the City Council have, have, are in the process of uh, undertaking this master plan of housing in North of Glasgow, um, which is going to um, include private housing, social housing, self-build and co-housing. So there is a commitment there to co-housing, but we don't know where it's going to be. That's what we would like, and that's what it says that you might be able to get. I'm just thinking if it's a designated type of land, so there's certain things that can't happen there and certain things that can't happen. Okay. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it was, it's, 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 it was housing, so and, it's, and the master plan is for housing, so um, I don't think I'm going to build a property or a fence wheel. Well, imagine if, it's built, if something like that had massive, like, you know, uh -huh. environmental uh -huh. like, uh -huh. impact uh 
there was nothing we had on here before the previous housing. We've checked the land I mean, through maps in the Mitchell Library. Uh -huh. I mean, there was before the council used to have built in the 1870s, it was just land. Yeah. Um, it was actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of wet land, it's not marsh, but I mean, mm -hmm. but it is, I mean, to, you know, in terms of topography, it's about the lowest place in, in the area, as you'll see when you go along. Um, so the land is, is like, I mean, it's damp, I think it's probably the worst word. Um, but I mean, they, they, they built the multis there, low, low, low spots, like eight stories to them, but, um, but there's all the small multis there. I mean, that was the first time the land had been used. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly they were able to build um, eight story multis there and they didn't collapse into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and there's certainly no evidence of mine workings around that. Um, so it, 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 I think the land's pretty safe. Did you notice know, the grow rhubarb there? Is that not one? Aye, but well, that was the other side actually, yeah. uh, on the road coming up Fiesta, underneath the railway bridge. That's the other side was a rhubarb field. Yeah. 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 That, that's where raspberries growing all along the railway track there. So obviously that's a railway line there. So there's raspberries growing along there. So we got a first patch of raspberry jam last summer. I'm also, <laughs> I'm also a jam maker as well, too. Yeah. <laughs> so this could be another potential enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> this could be another enterprise for the jam. Um, is there any more questions? Will we go over and have a look at the site and then we can have a look at that? that we can go back and get a cup of tea. Does that sound okay? Have we done for that? Yeah. It's only just literally two, two minutes. minutes. Two minutes over that, two minutes.